More than 3,000 years ago in the American Southwest, groups of native peoples began to move away from a nomadic existence of hunting and gathering to early forms of farming. In particular, they began to grow crops such as corn and squash. However, in such a dry and arid region, these early people couldn't survive by farming alone. While the land could provide some additional food, the people in this region continued to hunt and gather with simple tools such as clubs, hunting sticks, and spears. Archaeologists believe that some of these early people may have inhabited natural caves, but most lived in pit houses. In addition to experimenting with crops, they began to hunt with bows and arrows. Approximately 2,000 years later, some groups of native peoples in this region began to develop more sophisticated farming methods that included the use of irrigation, the ability to channel water to crops. Now that it was possible to grow crops more successfully, these native people became committed to the areas that their crops grew. As a result, they began to settle in one place. This meant that Southwestern native cultures began to develop and thrive. Some of these groups of people included the ancestral Pueblo, the Mogollon, and the Hohokam. The Mogollon inhabited the mountainous areas of southwestern New Mexico and east central Arizona. They diverted streams so that they could water their crops and may have even experimented with ways of storing water. The Hohokam inhabited the desert areas of what is present day southern Arizona. They built a network of canals that channeled water to their fields. This type of early engineering helped these people overcome the challenges presented by their environment. Today, I want to focus on the ancestral Pueblo who lived in an area of the Southwest that connects present day Colorado, New Mexico, Arizona, and Utah. This area is often referred to as the Four Corners. The ancestral Pueblo lived throughout this region. Many lived in the dry valleys near smaller rivers or waterways. Having struggled with the challenges of living in the drier valley areas, some then moved on to the raised plateaus called mesas. Just like the Mogollon and the Hohokam, the ancestral Pueblo developed ways to divert water from streams and rivers to irrigate their fields. There are many reasons why some of the ancestral Pueblo moved up onto the greener mesas. There were trees growing on these mesas that provided the native people with shelter and wood. Because mesas are raised flatlands or plateaus, they receive more sunlight than the valleys below. So the mesas also received more rain and snow than the valleys, making them more ideal of an environment for growing crops. However, whether they lived on the mesas or in the valleys, they were able to grow a larger food supply. And as a result, the ancestral Pueblo population increased and their culture developed. Over time, they began to grow a variety of crops, including beans, which are high in protein. They began to raise turkeys and use their feathers to make blankets and feathered robes. They constructed pit houses that were dug into the ground and covered with tree branches, leaves, and dirt. The ancestral Pueblo moved on to building homes above ground. Initially, they used wood and adobe, a sun-dried brick made from clay to construct simple homes. Eventually, they became skilled stone workers and learned how to construct extremely solid homes that were several stories high. Some of these homes had as many as 100 connecting rooms. These structures were the earliest forms of high-rise buildings. The flat rooftops of these impressive buildings had a special function in the fall. Crops that had been harvested were laid out on the flat rooftops to dry in the warm sunshine. The ancestral Pueblo began to live in large settlements or villages. It was not unusual for hundreds of people to live in one village. These villages eventually became known as pueblos, the Spanish word for towns. The ancestral pueblo continued to construct rooms beneath the ground, but over time, these underground rooms called kivas changed shape. They became round or keyhole shaped. A special few were much larger and used only for important religious ceremonies. The ancestral pueblo worshiped nature gods it's thought that they believed that humans were first created inside the earth, and eventually they crawled out onto the surface of the earth. This is called a creation story. Each kiva contained a hole in the ground to signify this belief. The ancestral Pueblo became known for their stonework, their excellent basket weaving, and their pottery. 
Their basket weaving in particular was quite extraordinary. Their baskets were beautifully designed and intricately woven. They were so carefully woven that after they were coated with mud and baked in the sun, they could be used for cooking, carrying water, and storing harvested crops. The ancestral Pueblo used yucca bark and various plant fibers to make baskets, ropes, mats, and sandals. They planted cotton and used it to make lighter, more comfortable clothing. They developed pottery that varied in color and size and texture. The ancestral Pueblo mined turquoise stone and used it in their jewelry. They traded turquoise, pots, and cotton with other native groups. Each family ate meals together. The head man of the home offered food to the gods. He did this by throwing a small amount of food onto the fire that was used to cook the food. The ancestral Pueblo were a spiritual people who lived their lives with thoughtful intention and careful plans. The people in each Pueblo were part of a specific clan or tribe, and every clan was given an equal amount of farmland. The ancestral Pueblo were skillful farmers, builders, and craftsmen. It would have been an extraordinary sight to see a busy ancestral Pueblo village to live and walk amid the stone structures that blended in so well into the environment. Moving through the town, you might see the ancient craftsmen at work or observe the religious leaders urging the nature gods to help them. During the growing season, you could watch the conscientious or careful farmers in their fields tending their crops. Strangely, for reasons we cannot fully explain, the ancestral Pueblo began to abandon their homes. Instead, they began to construct homes called cliff dwellings beneath or at the base of the cliffs. It's possible that the decision to abandon their more exposed homes was because of safety or security concerns. The ancestral Pueblo may have been in constant conflict with other neighboring groups of people. Certainly, these new structures beneath the cliffs were more defensible. The ancestral Pueblo population lived more closely together in these enormous cliff structures. Some of these structures had as many as 1,000 rooms and rose up four stories high beneath the cliff. The cliff dwellings were difficult to get to, though. People had to climb up and down using finger and footholds carved into the rock. Nevertheless, the ancestral Pueblo continued to irrigate and tend to their fields, and their craftsmanship continued to flourish, at least for a while. Another mystery also surrounds these ancient people. By about 1300 CE, the ancestral Pueblo had left these magnificent homes never to return again. It seems that over a period of time, family groups just walked away from their ancestral homes and set out into the arid valleys. They left behind all their tools and supplies used in daily life and went in search of other places to settle. Historians seem sure that they went to other areas in the Southwest, including the Little Colorado River region of Arizona and the Rio Grande River of, North, of New Mexico. Scientists and historians also know that there was a great drought between 1276 and 1299. This would have caused crop failure and possible starvation. Wars with other native groups would certainly have added to the struggle to survive. Perhaps too many problems arose from the people trying to live in such a cramped condition that they decided they couldn't overcome them. Although we don't know why the ancestral Pueblo people left their homes, we do know that they raised families, celebrated life, felt the warmth of the sun and left footprints in the snow. They left enough of themselves that we can imagine their lives and archeologists can put together some of the pieces. We're connected to them by our own presence here on the earth and the knowledge that their descendants still thrive in parts of the American Southwest.